the OBS is showing that the mic is working now. For some good reason, it just stopped working. All right, perfect. Okay, so we're now seven minutes in, and today we'll be talking about black holes. So, um, and the reason why we're talking about black holes today is because, let's see, if I'm not mistaken, Uncle Bill Druin suggested this topic. So, let's go ahead and get into it. And so, actually, let me pull up what he stated because he it says something interesting. Um, something that... I wasn't aware of actually when he said it. I think he was talking about how certain types, I believe supermassive black holes can have densities that are comparable to the density of water. Which I found to be pretty cool actually. And let me make sure I got that right though. Um... Yes, they can have densities lower than water. All right. So let's go ahead and get into that. And then a little bit more if we have time. So, first off, what are black holes? Um, well, in general, we know them to be astronomical objects that are in space. And they have gravitational attraction, attraction such that if you get within to a certain radius of these objects, you can't escape them. Wait, am I missing something? Something disappeared here. I'm talking and there's like black space down here. Let's see, the PDF is good. It's the editor. Hmm. That's there. So let me actually bring back something really quick, guys. Give me one second. The tech editor. It's right here. Um, I'm really hoping this isn't one of those days where I just start having a bunch of... All right, that's working. A bunch of, like... Technical difficulties. All right, I'll do that. And then I'm going to go back. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and start off with a definition for what a what a of of, of what a black hole is and how you would create one, of course. Um, and so from my understanding, if you wanted to be able to create a black hole, given some amount of mass, you'd have to be able to fit that mass into a density that's going to be defined by the Schwarzschild, Schwarzschild radius. Um, and so we're going to first start off by doing a, a quick calculation for how to get the Schwarzschild radius. All right, so no intent. Now, one way, one way of doing this, of course, is going through general relativity and um, solving for the Schwarzschild uh, metric. We're not doing that. No, we're not doing that. Um, I've done it before a while ago. Oh guys, don't 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 be mad at me if I get this wrong. Um, I think it's like this. Um, yeah, I think that's how you spell Schwartz Child. Um, radius calculation. And so the calculation I'm going to present here is one that I did a very long time ago, before taking um, general relativity. So, but 
Again, and and it's basically it's going to be based off of um off of classic. Well, I guess you could say classical mechanics. Wait, am, am I am I misspelling it? Is that how you spell it? Wait, that can't that's not, that can't be how you spell it. I know there's a child in it. It's not it's not that right. S W C H A Z O W, or is that how you pronounce it? Swa, Chows? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Larry. I'm going to actually copy and paste what you have there just to make sure I got it right. All right, yeah, so it came out to be the same, I think. All right, so we're going to start off with the idea that um, we do know that once you are at or within the Schwarzschild radius, there is no escape. No matter what velocity you can attain, you won't be able to escape. And as we know it, the fastest velocity that one can go at or the fastest velocity at which a particular thing can achieve is the speed of light, and that just happens to be light, of course, itself. Um, so that's the fastest thing that moves in our universe. And not even light can escape a black hole once it's crossed that radius, which corresponds to the event horizon of a black hole. So we're going to start off with the idea of the escape velocity. So V underscore escape, ESP. It equals to, if I'm remembering this correctly, I believe it's the square root of um, square root of. Let's see. Two. Two gm actually. Yeah, two gm. I think I'm getting I'm doing this correctly. Let me quickly do the math in my in my mind real fast. I know you can get get it by equating the kinetic energy of an object to its to the potential energy of the object. Let's see. Let's say mgh one half m v squared. MG the yes, I think that or is it two G R? This is it. Sorry, two G R. All right. Ah, someone did it for me. Thank you. Um, but yeah, that's exactly where I was going to be going with this. Um, two capital G M over C squared. Exactly. I was I was gonna derive that from this, but we'll just go. Actually, we'll just go ahead and we'll just use the result that um, Para has already given us. But basically, you can go from the idea. Actually, I'll I'll, I'll do this. Actually, I'll go from this and then I'll I'll derive exactly what um, Para has put there. So we can start off with the escape velocity, and in this case. This lowercase g that I've put in here would correspond to the g that you can get from um, gravitational potential. So, um, the escape, we're going to now note, let's see, begin, align star. And this is just another way of being able to derive the Schwarz, um, Schwarzschild radius. I'm sorry. No, the the g the, the lowercase g in the upper um in the upper equation corresponds to the acceleration of gravity. And so now what we can do is so now what we can do is we can basically equate 
Or we can, I would solve for it, but I already know it off the top of my head. This lowercase g is going to be equal to the to the um, ratio that we, we typically see in Newton's gravity formula. So it's going to be equal to let's say, fraction g m over r squared. So let's go ahead and typeset this. We have v escape. We know that the lowercase g is equal to that. So now what we do is we can now substitute in our lowercase g into our, our equation up top. We get v escape is now going to be equal to the square root of 2 times r times this fraction of gm over r squared. All right, so far so good. And then we can reduce the right-hand side of the equation, or simplify, excuse me. And so we now get the square root of 2 times g m over r. All right. So the the, cute, the the key thing to note here is that that light can't even escape black holes, right? Once it passes this particular radius. And so our 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 maximum velocity that we can achieve for V escape is the speed of light c. So we can now change it to be such that we get c is equal to so c and it's equal to 2 times, it's going to be equal to 2 times gm, GM over r. And so upon solving for r, which in this case corresponds to the, sh the Schwarzschild radius, we end up finally getting that r is going to be equal to and I'm going to put a subscript s to represent Schwarz, the Schwarzschild radius it's equal to the fraction 2 gm over c squared And so you can go from this particular derivation to get the Schwarzschild radius. Let's see. So yeah, escape velocity. Also, hi to everybody. I haven't even been saying hi to everybody. So I'm seeing some new names here. Of course, hi, Larry. Hi. Tom Van Scotter, hi Paranor, hi Uncle Bill Druin, hi Big J, hi Adam, hi Peter, hi Guido. All right, so this is the short shroud radius, which corresponds to the radius of a black hole in which nothing can escape it. Once you're at this radius, you can't escape. Yeah, for the Schwarzschild radius, it's always C.
Because it's the fastest that anything, well, as far as we know, it's the fastest that anything can move at. Yes. So one of the key things, um, one of the key things to be able to be classified as a black hole, um, mass M must be encompassed within a radius of R sub S. <laughs> exactly. Now we can choose our flavor. But we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate what the density of a black hole would have to be, given that we know this, this Schwarzschild radius. Yep, Sag A is our personal black hole, supermassive black hole. All right. So now we're going to go ahead... So no indent, and we're going to calculate what the density of the black hole would have to be given that we know its radius. So let's put this black hole density. So we all know that the density rho is going to be um it's equal to the mass of the object divided by its volume or the volume that encompasses that mass. So I'll typeset this. So in this situation, we can continue with along this, this line of argument where we know the volume we know the volume is equal to four, four thirds pi r cubed. So I'm not going to substitute in for the for the volume. So fraction four thirds pi r cubed. And in the case of a black hole, this radius must be the Schwarzschild radius. So S. All right, so earlier we solved, so I'll scroll up, we solved for the radius, and we can see that the radius, in this case, um, is equal to 2gm over c squared, but, two, but the ratio of 2g over c squared is basically a constant. So it's the same thing as saying that the radius itself is only proportional to the mass of the object. So making that substitution in, we get the following. Let's see. All right. So I'm going back and forth to make sure that I'm, I'm doing this correctly. Um, hmm. I'll do this. Left, right. And I'll copy and paste this. And hopefully this comes out correctly. All right. So, uh, continuing along this line of thought, we end up getting we end up getting the density. And guys, please check my math on this because I don't want to get this wrong. Let's see. So, let's, see, let's do this fraction. We get we get what appears to be, and I'll put two fractions actually here. As far as as far as the mass is concerned, we're basically going to get one over m squared. 
But the rest of it is going to be basically a constant. I would just put C for a constant, but we'll go ahead and solve for the rest of it. Um, C squared, that's going to be, we're going to get uh, speed of light to the sixth power in the numerator. Anything else in the numerator? We get a 3 cubed. Ah, uh, it's okay. 4 times 2 cubed is 8. So we'll get an 8 in the denominator. We'll get a pi. Um, we'll get a gravitational constant g. And now just to finish dealing with the rest of the... So I got the 8. I think that's, and I think the three goes up top. I think this is right. I'll go ahead and typeset this. And if this looks wrong to you guys, just let me know. Let's see, three in the numerator. Two, four, eight, eight times four is 32 actually. Sorry. I think this is it. All right. If this is wrong, guys, let me know. But the the key the key thing that that I notice here is that the density goes as one over m squared. Right. Everything else is a constant. And the one thing that we must note, though, is that the physical radius of a black hole, that is the actual mass that's that's used to make the black hole, is gonna um. It's going to be much. It's going to be smaller than the um, Schwarzschild radius. Uh, it's wrong. <laughs> is that is that is that wrong, guys? Did I do that wrong there? But no, seriously, I want you guys to make sure you're checking my math, though, here. I, I think this is right. I think it's right. That will bust. <laughs> oh, man, that, that'll kill the calculator, huh? Well, G, G in itself is a, is a, um, it's a fairly small constant. And so I think it's going to be offset by c to the sixth power. But yeah, I haven't I haven't done this particular calculation before. I do know that the density should go as one over m squared, but the constant that's out front I'm not too sure about. But we're going to end up seeing it because we're going to use um we're going to use we're going to write up a, a quick little program to do our calculations for us. All right. So this should be the density of the black hole, right? So now what we're going to do, if you guys can find the equation online, by all means, please do, to verify that this is correct. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch scenes, and we're going to transition over to the, co the coding portion of this. And I've kind of already started to set things up. So I'm going to move over as well. Let's see. I need my terminal and I need my, there we go. So G is, is, um, is 10 to the negative 11. And that's in, and so this is in SI units. And if I'm doing the speed of light, yeah, if I'm doing the speed of light in SI units, that's on the order of 10 to the 8. So, and I think I put it to the 6 power. So that's like, that's, yeah, that's, that's insanely large.
All right, we're just gonna we're gonna continue from here though. Mathematically speaking, I think it's I think it's just fine. I think it's right. But if it's wrong, we'll find out soon enough. <laughs> um, all right, so going over to the coding portion of this all. I'm going to go ahead and switch here to the source code. I've kind of made like a generic source code that we could just fill in as we go. All right, so the very first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make a function that can output the density given the, um, given the mass. And so actually, we can have the um, computer program calculate that constant for us and be able to let us know, let us know what it is. All right, so double, I'm going to put density. And this, of course, we'll need, we'll need to pass one value to it, which is the mass, which we can pass it as a double. And so that's the function um, declaration, and then we'll define the function after the main function. And we'll just put this as mass. And so our equation that we're going to want to use, and then make sure you guys can see what I'm seeing. So go back here. We have this fraction. So let's put this double constant. And this constant is going to be equal to 3c squared. So I need to put the speed of light in here. So we have to really be careful of what units we work in. So speed of light. And this is going to be 3E8 e and so this is going to be in units of meters per second. We're also going to need the, the gravitational constant. So thanks Larry for, for getting that already. So I'm going to go ahead and look at what you got there. So 6.674. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this and just modify as I need. Okay. And so we can put here E negative 11. Close that off and then put that the units is this. All right. <laughs> Wikipedia. Yes, Wikipedia knows everything. You guys can probably hear my dog in the background. He wants attention right now. Let's see. All right. So our constant is going to end up coming out to be 3. Numerator is going to be 3 times the speed of light to the 6th power. So let me go ahead and do that. 3 times. And I'm going to use this function really quick. 6. that and we'll divide this by thirty two times pi times g all right so thirty two times I think this works m pi times 
you know what? C, capital G. This makes things a lot easier for me. So C, capital G. All right. So that's the constant. And I can now have it return my constant times 1 over my mass squared. All right. Okay, this is a lot better, I think. I can get rid of this out one, outer ones. All right. That took so much longer than I expected. <laughs> but we need to note that our unit for our density is going to be an SI. So now that we have this, we can now go up top. And we can now start writing out our main function. So the density that we're going to calculate, which I'll just denote as rho, is our variable. We're going to need to declare the function within our main function. That's just a simple copy and paste. As of right now, we're only concerned with passing the mass of the black hole. So argc will just need to have two parameters at minimum. And we end up getting their row is going to be equal to, I need to define one more variable, the mass. Um, okay. So the mass is going to be equal to the first parameter we pass to the program. So argv1, and then our density that we calculate, we can get from our function we just defined, where we're passing the mass. I remember in one of our past streams, we talked about the best function to use for this to, to, to convert the shrink, the, the shrink form of the mass into an actual double. I can't remember what the function was. If someone can remind me, then I'll go ahead and use it. But for right now, I'm just going to use um, the a to f function that's built into to C++. So a to f, r, v, 1. And I think this is good. And so let's go ahead and output the result to the screen. So we're going to see out density of black hole. Noting the fact that it has to be an SI unit. So row. <laughs> what are you guys talking about in chat there? Oh man, I didn't I didn't see anything else. All I saw was placenta. That was enough for me to to realize that I don't want to be a part of that conversation. <laughs> At least the only time I've actually ever heard that word was, of course, when someone's about to give childbirth or something, have a baby. All right, so density of black hole is going to be rho. Um, I should probably also note what the units would be. So let's see, this is SI. I think everything has been done in SI. So it's mass up top, so it has to be, well, wait a second. Well, the unit will still be the same. 
So it will need to be units of mass per unit um, meters cubed. Right. So kilograms per meter cubed. I think this is good. All right. So let's go ahead and, and, and compile this. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. I'm happy you clarified that, Larry, because um, I was starting to wonder. All right. So let's go ahead and compile it and see what happens. Oops, wrong. Let's make that. Okay, it didn't like something. Okay, what did it didn't like? Exponent has no digits. Huh. That's interesting. Negative 11. Oh, maybe it was issue when I copied and pasted. Maybe it, it couldn't understand the, um, the font. So let's see what happens now. There we go. That's better. All right. And so I should be able to run it now. And if I run it without any parameters, it does nothing. Because it should do nothing. But now we need to be able to give it a mass value. So let's go ahead and test it. Let's see what happens if we were to throw one solar mass in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and open up the internet and figure out exactly what one solar mass is equivalent it's equivalent in um, units of kilograms. Hey, Christari. Welcome to today's stream. So you said, what UI is this? So I'm using... um. I'm using Aquamax as my as my text ed editor. So Aquamax is basically just a program, an Emacs program. And I'm writing in C++ as you, as you mentioned already. So let's see. I need to go online and I need to figure out what one solar mass is in units of kilograms. So one solar mass a kilogram that's perfect so it's two times 10 to the 30 kilograms so I'm gonna put two times 2e30 perfect all right so let's go ahead and run it see what happens so 2e30 and so the density of our black hole given that so I should probably mention that what mass that we're starting off with. So let's let's modify our statement here. So given a black hole mass of mass. And I need to mention the unit, which is kilograms. We'll get the following. Let's put a new line. All right. Compile that and rerun it again. Really? It's mad about something here? Oh. What did I do? Let's do this. I think this fixes the problem. All right. And there we go. So given a black hole mass of 
2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms, which is the equivalent of one solar mass, we'll get a density of a, a density black hole of that. So now I want to be able to see though at what mass, at what what mass black hole would correspond to having a density of water. And I'm I don't want to sit and have, have to like you know try a bunch of different masses to figure this out. So it'd be best if we write a function that solves for the mass given the density. So let's go ahead and make another a new function. And I'm not going to be able to I'm probably not going to be able to get into talk about the other topic I wanted to talk about today, which was um, tidal forces for um, black holes. Maybe I can save that for our next our next stream. So double, I'm just going to type put mat. Uh -huh. I use the variable mass inside the function, so let's do this. Black hole mass. There we go. And of course, I need to pass it one parameter, which is going to be the density. Let's go down here. Let's go ahead and make the definition for it. And really all I have to do is just, I can copy this information. I can copy all of it actually, I think. And just make the proper adjustments. So the constant is going to be the constant. We know that the density is equal to the constant divided by the mass squared. So to get the mass, it's going to be the constant squared. So constant times constant in the numerator. No, that's wrong. It's going to be the square root. Sorry about that. It's basically just the square root of the constant over the density. And again, guys, check my math on this. Um, I think it's right, though. I think that's right. I think it should just be the square root of the constant over the density. Let me go ahead and go to chat to make sure that's right. Okay, so let's see. So I don't understand. Is this saying that a black hole has a density of less than one kilogram per meter cubed? So given the way in which I've written things, it's saying that a stellar... Oh, that's interesting, actually. So what is the density of water? Let me do this really quick to make sure this is making sense. But that's what this is saying, the density of the black hole, given that the mass of the black hole is two times 10 to the 30 kilograms is less than one, meet, one kilogram, kilogram per meter cubed. Let me see what the density of water is to make, see if that makes sense. Because from my understanding, it's supermassive black holes that would have to, that would be able to generate densities that are less than the density of water. So let's see what the density of water is. So the density of water is, this is in units of, this is in, in not in SI. This, let's see, density of water, there we go, kilograms per meter cubed. Let's do that one. Hmm, that is interesting. So this is saying the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So I need to look at, I need to look at the equation of, written here. All right, let's do this. First things first. Let's go back to scene one.
And let's make sure that my density equation is correct. So how did I get to this? Let's see. That would be this. All right. So I feel pretty confident about the calculation for the Schwarzschild radius. Good. The density is equal to the mass per unit volume. Mass per divided by 4 thirds pi r cubed. I've substituted in the Schwarzschild radius, which is 2gm over c squared. The 1 over m squared is good. Let's see. The pi would stay in the denominator, so with the g. We have 4 times 2 cubed. 2 cubed is equal to 8. 8 times 4 is 32. And the 3 would move to the numerator. And a factor of c to the 6th power would also be in the numerator. So that looks good. If anyone disagrees with this equation, let me know. Or if you found a different equation online for the density of a black hole, let me know, guys. But so far, I think this is this is this is this is legit. All right. So I've programmed this function. Let's see. So wait a second. Not m cubed. Oh, that's it. Thank you, Michael T. Mayer. You caught it. <laughs> the g needs to be cubed. Ah. So this qu this equation is off. All right. Let's make that um that correction. And that might account for the reason why the why the result is thrown off. So let me first modify this. So g should be cubed. Can you see what I'm seeing, guys? Yes, you can. All right. So let's go ahead and make that quick correction. The g should be cubed here. I don't think I'm missing anything else. So now let's 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 go ahead and switch back to our other scene and make the correction here within the program. See, guys, I told you. Got You guys got to watch me. Keep me honest here, because I make those little mistakes. All right. So going back to this, I need to now cube the g, which is the same thing as saying g times g times g. All right, that should correct that for the constant. Do the same thing here. You guys can see what I'm doing here. Yes, OK. All right, and I think everything else should be good. So now we should be able to compile. And rerun it and see what happens now. I think it should correct it. There we go. <laughs> now this, this result makes much more sense. The density is going to be roughly around 2 times 10 to the 19 kilograms per um, <clears throat> meter cube. All right, let's do this really quickly because I'm seeing I'm running out of time. And so I am going to end up probably reserving talking about tidal forces for the next stream then. All right. So to make the modification, we've already made it the new, the new function. We are now going to go ahead and declare a new variable. And so... Let's say that this is going to be, it could still be mass actually. I don't need to make a new variable. I can keep the mass variable. All right. And so now we're going to want to a density. So we want something along the lines of the same statement here. So given the black hole density,
and I'll make a variable to, to collect that information from the user, or in this case, myself. So density, I don't want that. Let's just put, let's just put D for now. All right, so a black hole density of variable D, which is going to be in units of kilograms per meter cubed. Mass of black hole. So in mass of black hole will end up being whatever the mass is. In units of kilograms. And so in this situation, I'm going to want to collect the density value that we pass. So I'll put this D to be that, and I'll make it the second argument that I pass to the function. Or the third argument I pass. Well, the second argument I pass to the function. And I think this is good. But I need to calculate a new mass. So mass. Let's use our function that we need to define in more than one place here, or declare it at the very least. Declare it here. I'm going to use it here. And I'm going to pass it D. All right. All right. Wait, I'm missing something here. It's been a very long time since I've done math, but why is cubed shown as m to the negative three? Okay, so if it's to the negative power, that means it that, that means the variables in the denominator. And so for the density, um, your unit of length is going to be cubed, but it's going to be cubed in the in the denominator because your density goes as if, assuming everything else is constant and your volume can change, your density goes as um, 1 over the length cubed. All right, I'm going to quickly finish this up and just and run it. And so let's compile this. Hopefully it compiles just fine. This time, I'm going to use... I'm going to use the density of water. So 1e, and I think I saw it as 3. 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Oops. Let's go ahead and run it and see what it gives us. All right, so you need, so given a black hole density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, you generate, you'd have to have a massive black hole such that it has a mass of 2 times 2.7 times 10 to the 38 kilograms. Um, noting that, let's see, where is that? Noting that a solar mass is equal to 2 times 10 to the 30, how many more solar masses is that? That's on an order of 10 to the 8. 10 to the 8 kilograms, or 10 to the 8 times more. 10 to the 8 times more, and it's... Solar masses, wow. <laughs> That's like a hundred, what is that, a hundred million solar masses? Which I think is on the order of a of a black of a supermassive black hole. I hope what I just said here made sense. So basically what I did was I, I took the fact that two times ten to the thirty kilograms is equal to one solar mass, and to generate a black hole with the density of of um, the density of water, you need about 2.7 times 10 to the 38 kilograms in mass. That happens to be on the order of 10 to the 8 times more massive than the than the mass of a, of, a, of a single 
star that has this, of the mass of the sun. But yeah, you need roughly, it's saying that you need roughly on the order of um, 100 million solar masses to generate this density. But yeah, it's very, very big. And, and who was that earlier, actually? Hey, Michael, thanks for stopping by, one. And two, thanks for, for catching that um, mistake there. But um, but no, it, it, was, it wasn't a typo, though. When I was referring to the density, it should be mass to the net, or meters to the negative three power. All right, guys. I hope that I that, that this was a good stream for you guys. An enormous ocean. Ah, so is it reasonable that a black hole is of of constant density? Um, the calculations that we've made, if I'm not mistaken, assume that the black hole is of constant density. <laughs> 